they're going to figure this out and then we're all going to celebrate at the end. No, we weren't wrong. We weren't wrong when we, we started to ring alarm bells in the first Cleveland series. We weren't wrong when we saw Baltimore come in here and run you out of your own building. We weren't wrong when you end up getting a 8-5 triple play on you because your players lost concentration. We weren't wrong when Oakland came in here and played a really good series against the White Sox. And you're going, wait a minute, Oakland sucks. We weren't wrong when we're watching Cleveland just grow and grow and going, they should probably be worried what about, about Cleveland. Got swept by the Diamondbacks. We weren't wrong when they got swept by the Diamondbacks. We're like, this is awful. We weren't wrong when they, they decide to walk a hitter one and two in the Dodger series and then do it again. Do it again. We weren't wrong about them. They don't get to as an organization because this is what they were going to do. What they were going to do is if they were able to climb their ladder up to the American League Central Championship, they were going to tell us that we were all wrong. And then they were going to change their behavior. So who is wrong? They're they wrong. Were. They're wrong. And, and my hope is that because like now – I almost kind of want Cleveland to run it up on them. It, to me, it's almost not enough that they're going to win this division. I want them to win the division by double digits because I want it to be. I want to. I want to rub the White Sox's face in it so that they have to actually make change. That they can't just sit here and go, "Well, you know, guys." I'm going to do the Tony Gill sad voice. I was just saying, guys. Dan Zampillo in there. Well, he's talking about something else. Guys, we had so many guys that were hurt. And, and then you know, the manager got sick. No, rub their face in it. Rub their face in it so that they understand that things have got to change. And it's not just Tony La Russa, although that's a big portion of this. They've got to change everything. They've got to strip this down to the studs in their evaluation of who they are as a franchise. And if they don't do that, then they ain't learn a damn thing about what happened this year. And it's right there in front of them. I want their face rubbed in it. This team has, has made me sick all year. And I feel terrible for so many people within that organization. Mm -hmm. Ask me after the parade. Well, walk them over to the cemetery and throw them in the ground and say a cottage for them. But I, I have, I, I feel terrible for people who worked so hard to put this team in a position culturally, to put this team in a position promotionally, to under to embrace an aspect of this team, to to embrace. Uh, different cultures and different colors and be something new and different and connective, genuinely connective with the South side of Chicago in a way that they didn't care about if they pissed off old Bridgeport, Bob, they didn't care. And then they hire Bridgeport, Bob. The, and uh, exactly out of guilt. And there, but there are people there that didn't That's, want it, that, that never wanted it. And that were forced every day, forced every day to be miserable coming to work and trying to overcome it. That's another thing they got wrong, Dan. And that's another thing that they they don't get to now tell us that they were right about because this failed experiment that, that that Jerry put in front of us with the hiring of Tony La Russa is an embarrassment. And beyond it being an embarrassment, he should be angry. He should be angry at himself and he should be angry at his friend because he wasted time. He's wasted two seasons of, of, of White Sox goodness because he wanted him to do this. And you can see now how drastically things can change in just a year's time. It's part of the reason that I'm, I'm mad at Rick, too, and I'm mad at the White Sox not going for it this year because now, guess what? Now, when you go and try and find a free agent, you're going to have to compete with at least two more teams in the American League because if I'm a free agent and I'm looking at, do I want to go play for the White Sox or do I want to go play for Baltimore? Or do I want to go play for Cleveland? Which is crazy. They they looked around. They uh, Their assessment of the American League Central was so weighted to what they already had. It blinded them to what was happening around them. They thought they were going to be so good. And they never in a million years took, took the thought of, well, maybe we should worry about guys being injured or guys not moving to the next step in their development as players. What are we doing to help that? 
they have that's what I'm saying strip it down to the studs from an evaluation standpoint when do you give guys money when, how whatever your metric how many whatever scouting your, directors you want them to fire what whatever your rubric was for buying out arbitration years on players you need to really think about that going forward and I think about the other major septuagenarian who's employed right now, or at least he's close in Buck Showalter. And they're getting Max Scherzer back. You know, they they saw Mad Max come back. They have the the most terrifying starting pitching rotation in, in baseball. Like they're and they were contained for it. That's it. They had the roster to back it up. And you can't say that about the White Sox. You certainly couldn't say it about the starting pitching rotation when you when you put this thing together beginning in the offseason. So I go back to the question of what what was your goal? Because we sat here and listened to everybody talk about how, oh, the Astros were a better team. The Astros were a better team. And they were resigned to it as if it was an accepted thing. Because they No, won. they said they were going to get better but after they, the Astros drummed they, them out. They said they, it. A lot of people didn't. They said, oh, you know, they won the division last year. What, what was the actual goal? I would like to know. I think that their goal, if you asked anyone around there, their goal was to win the World Series. I just don't think that they were that they thought it would be hard to get back to where they were and they weren't in completely invested in it in a way that if if you were willing to go as far as you know what this team needs it needs Tony La Russa. great great but then when the team needs a right fielder go get one when the team needs a second baseman, go get one. When the team needs a starting pitcher in a season where you think you're a World Series contender, go get one. They did, but it was dumb luck. The, right. They des Here's the problem with it, Dan. They deserve credit for the found $20 bills of Johnny Cueto and Elvis Andrews, but they also don't because you shouldn't have been in a situation where you needed Johnny Cueto at the beginning of the season to save your ass because you didn't do, cuz you were running Dallas Keuchel out there as your fifth starter at the beginning of the season and you knew damn well that you weren't going to push Michael Kopech to 150 170 200 innings you knew damn well that was part of your plan now, a part of your plan that you said out loud so if you knew that going into the season, why didn't you prepare for that? Go back and check the tape when we started using the term DFA after seeing Dallas Keuchel. Go check the Twitter timeline where some of us are like, nope, that's enough of that. Like if you're, if you're a real contender. It was April. It, yeah, seriously. You know when I said it? It was September you know when I said of it? last year. When, when, we said, when we said, look, this is, August. This, this is not a major league pitcher. You are a contender. This is not a major league pitcher. And they keep rolling them out there and keep rolling them out there. You don't get those games back. But they thought that that's that's what I mean, Dan. They thought that they were going to get those games back. That's why th when when they were saying, when fans were going, this doesn't look right. And they're like, ah, you don't know what you're talking about. Don't worry about it. It's a long season. Okay. How many lineups did we see like that? How many how many conceded day games after night games did we see like this? It well, is a lack of urgency from an organizational standpoint that has the White Sox in this mess that they're in right now. And I I want to hold them all accountable from the 27th player on the roster all the way up to ownership. Show me some now. Because because if you bring Tony LaRusso back, that's not happening. The, I'm just saying, Dan. Happening. He's he's done. We're, he, we're never gonna see him again. I'm just saying we have if, no idea if, where he is now. If you bring him back here as this team's manager and hide behind injuries, you're going to you're gonna take a a blow from your fan. Oh, base. that park's empty. You're gonna because because uh, people have had enough. Good luck and, selling. And so you, even if you're if you're on their sales staff right now, and I, I'm seeing the ads during broadcast. I'm seeing the ads ever about next year's season tickets. The best thing you can do right now is is come out of your hidey hole and tell us that Tony Larusa that a managerial search is is underway. Tell us who's running the search and what the criteria is going to be for the search. Otherwise, you're not going to sell a damn ticket. You know who is wrong about the White Sox? The White Sox. Mm -hmm. You damn right they were. And 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 since since we're just going to go through the whole roster, let's let's do this. Let's let's really get into it. Joe Kelly. There it is. Ah! There it is. Was supposed to pitch in the seventh, but he's bad he's and hurt. 
He's got to come back next year. And he's, he's on, on the, the team, team for, for ne- next year. You're damn right, Farmio. He's also on the team for next year. I don't think because I you signed this. a guy for two years and you thought you were so good that you were going to just let this guy rehab for a year. And he would be fine when September came. Go White Sox. Do you see the pattern, Dan? Layla, you see the pattern Where of the decisions that were made and how those decisions ended up playing out. Everything was backed up to the end of the season. Michael Kopech, we have to save him because we want him to throw meaningful innings in September and October. Guess what? Too late. When you got to September, is he throwing any more meaningful innings? He is not are you throwing mean, those. Oh, you mean kind of like what happened in the playoff series last year where it was said if we were in a position to win, we would have used him? You were in a position to win. You signed a guy that had to rehab and miss a majority of the beginning of the season. But it was okay because he was going to pitch meaningful innings in September and October. But then you found out that he's hurt and like really hurt, even though the manager didn't know what was going on with him. And then you found out he was bad, but you signed him to a two year deal. So he's going to be here next year or his salary is going to be here next year. And you've got a problem. Everyone told you your bullpen didn't need a little bit of help because the guy that just signed in the offseason can't pitch. So what do you do? You go out and say, well, I got the other guy hurt, but he'll be back in September and October to throw meaningful innings from us, a.k.a. Aaron Bummer. And then you say, well, let me go get someone to just bridge that gap. Instead of going to get help in other places, you decide to go get a guy who's on the team for next year that the manager can't trust. And in the moment when you needed to trust him, he went out there and gave up the booty. This is the pattern of decision-making that the White Sox have made. Everything was backed up to the end of the season. But there's a problem with that. You have to get to the end of the season. You have to compete from the moment that the season starts. You can't give away games to hungry teams. And part of the reason that you can't give away games to hungry teams is that they gain confidence. And they find out that you're soft. They find out that they can take extra bases on you. And you go, they're not supposed to do that. They're mentally soft, and they've been physically soft. Swaggy no legs has been the mascot of this team, and you can you you can have all the swag in the world, but you can't play because your legs are sore. You come out of the game because your legs are sore. Ooh, nice play—a running catch over and left. Oh, oh, ah, ah, oh, we pulled up. Oh, look at him hustle down to first. Oh, no. Oh! My legs. Oh, there they went again. Can you play tomorrow? No, I can't. It's a big game. We'd love to have you. No, we. I, I, I can't play. So we're going to have to call up minor leaguers who are going to come up and play. End of bench okay, guys. But they're not going to actually play because the manager the who manager was creating the lineups like at the young time players. didn't value rookies. Physical toughness, mental toughness. This idea that we're going to we're going to buy out your arb years. Because we know how you're going to develop and you're going to, what, what you're going to be for us. Here is a big check for guaranteed money right now. Because this is part of a core. You are part of a core of this team that's going to win a title here. Here's all this guaranteed money. We're not going to be on prove-it deals. All right, great. I'm in. Thank you. Here's my signature. How are your legs? They hurt. That's another part of this, Dan. We needed to make big changes in the way that we went about training this team oh okay was your team healthier this year no not by a long shot oh all right cool so are you going to do it again because the thing that you're doing isn't working and organizationally you allowed guys to be like "Eh, well i can go with 60 70 percent and the reason that you had to allow those guys to go at 60, 70% is because your minor league system is so bad. How bad is it? It's so bad that you didn't feel comfortable calling any of those players up to replace all the players that you let play at 60%. See what I mean by organizational dysfunction? It's easy to throw this at Tony LaRusso, and we should. You, but you left out a piece of that. That same thin minor league system is what prevents you from being able at the deadline 
to say, am I overpaying? Yeah, I'm overpaying. But you know you know who overpays? Good organizations who compete for World Series. Everybody. Who never stop drafting and developing ever. Who yeah. are constantly finding value, building value, because when they need it at the major league level, when you're in your window, when you have built everything to be at that point, your resources are there. You've created value that you can then flip are the, for people who are material to your championship. Are the Mets complaining about losing Pete Crow Armstrong right now? Hell no. No, they don't probably forgot who he is. They're worried about winning a World Series. Oddly enough, the team that benefited from the Cesar Hernandez trade is who's in this town to close it out. And, and Layla, guess which owner didn't want that owner in Major League Baseball? The owner of the White Sox, because you know why? Because it meant that he was going to have to spend to keep up. He wanted to give the franchise to A-Rod. Go White Sox. That would have been better for the rest of the NL East. That's where we're at.